Right, hello everyone, and welcome you to the Intermediate English. And with me, Prama Pasakon, be your parcel. And today, Friday, the 17th of July, 2020. Um, last Friday, we talked about the geography. And the purpose of geography is to make you understand what the UK is like. Because to me, before I came to the UK, I was confused between the UK and England. Um, so last week we have learned about that. And this week, and we are very lucky to have one of my own friend. The reason why I said own friend, because we met, I thought over 20 years ago when I was a student at MCU. I think at that time, I was the third year student in 1990. Uh, 1997 or 1998, yeah, 1998. I'm not quite sure about the year, perhaps um, she can tell us more about her time in Thailand. Right, as we normally do, we will begin our class with paying homage to the treatment jam. Oh no, 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 I need to... Um, all right. Right, so we will begin our lesson with paying homage to the Trippin Jam in Bali language. And then we, we do a very short meditation, maybe just for uh, two, three minutes. If you are ready, uh, if you are ready, now you may palm your hands together and then we're gonna recite in Bali language. Arahang Samma Samputho Pakawa Putang Pakawantang Apiwa Temi Sawakato Pakawata Tamo Tamang Namasami Supati Pano Pakawato Sawaga Sanko Sankang Namami Namo Atasa Pakawato Arahato Samba Samputasa Namo Atasa Pakawato Arahato Samba Samputasa Namo Atasa Pakawato Arahato Samba Samputasa Right now we are going to meditate for about three minutes. I reset the meditation bell. When you hear the bell, and then you can close your eyes. Relax the body and mind, breathe in and breathe out normally. When you breathe in, you know it. When you breathe out, you know it. If you are distracted by thought, acknowledge it, observe it, and then let it go.
observe the sound, hearing, hearing, hearing. You may open your eyes now. Right, and let me say welcome you to the Intermediate English again. Um, today, Friday, the 17th of July, 2020. And the reason why that I begin the class with meditation, because I find meditation very helpful. And I myself never learned the English vocabularies by heart. When I was young, I meditate a lot. I meditate every day. I thought meditation helped me with the memory. It doesn't mean that I can remember the, the English vocabulary once. I um, write it down and try to use them whenever I have time. Right, so as I said that today we have the guest speaker. Um, back in 1997, when I was a student at MCU, um, she went to visit Thailand. And then, as I remember, she was invited to our class. Yeah, and then we have a chance to practice English with the native speaker. So today, um, we are very honored to have her as a guest speaker. And I better invite her to tell us about her life, for example, her name and what she's doing and where she's living now. Okay, let's say welcome uh, Claire Green. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself. You unmute can't... myself. Yeah, okay. Sawadee Namaste. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Claire. And at the moment, I am living in Exeter, in the southwest of England. It's um, a very small city. Uh, but it's a very, it's a very lovely city. And I work at the University of Exeter as an equality and diversity advisor. Um, and my job is to ensure that um, people who have protected characteristics like a disability or race or religion or um, sexual orientation that they are um, taken care for in the university. So we promote um, we promote those areas and we ensure that everybody is treated not so much equally but equitably and if there is any discrimination or any um, racism then I work with my team to support people at the university and so everybody has a, a good experience because we have many students from all over the world and um, we have um, a very diverse community at the university. So that's my job. Um, I met Patsagon, like he said, in 1998 when I visited Thailand and I was teaching English um, at Wat Chayapruk School. Do you know, does anybody know Wat Chayapruk? Which is just is outside, of, yeah, just outside of Bangkok. Okay. It's a temple school. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. What I put, and um, I was teaching English there. And one day I was visiting, I think it was the Golden Temple, and two monks came up to me. I think it was Wichi and, and Ba. Two monks came up to me and said, yeah. Oh, hello, <laughs> how are you? Um, what are you doing here? And we got chatting. And then they said, Would you like to come and visit us at our temple? and talk with us and chat about you know your life and what we do so I did so I went over and 
I used to visit you quite often, didn't I, Patsagon? Um, quite sort of on a Sunday, we go over and then we would talk and they would practice their English. And that's how we met. And you, Patsagon and Wichi and Ba encouraged me to go to um, What's One Mock? Is that? What's the Isodara? Yes. For, for a 10 day meditation retreat. And oh, you okay, said, okay, okay. That, that is What's One Mock, sorry. Yeah, What's One Mock, yeah. And so I went there and I did one 10 day retreat. And then I liked it so much, I went back and did another 10 day retreat. And then my life changed from there. From there, I learned about um, the teachings of the Buddha and it has helped me and doing meditation and being mindful and practicing mindfulness has helped me throughout my life. The past 25 years, it has helped me in so many situations and so many circumstances to, um, yeah, to, to lead a happy life. So I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for um, Patsagon for encouraging me 20 years ago to, right, to right. go and do that. So could you please pause for a while? Yeah, I just want to make sure that my students understand what you just said. Okay. <laughs> อ่าตกลงฟังฟังรู้เรื่องจะมั้ยครับมีมีมีท่านไหนที่ฟังไม่รู้เรื่องมั้งมีมั้ยอ่าอ้าวถามถามเป็นรายตัวกันแล้วก
And there are some some few words that you need to understand, like uh, discrimination, and I can't remember all the words. Equality. Uh, equality. Yeah, equality. Yeah. Okay. คำพวกเนี้ยเราสามารถที่จะเรียนรู้แล้วก็เอามันไปใช้เพื่อที่ว่าเราจะได้ใช้เป็นนะครับ Right. So anything more you would like to say, Claire? No, that's good. You may continue. All right. Thank you. โอเคนะครับวันนี้เราจะเรียนเรื่องหลักๆนะครับเดี๋ยวผมจะแชร์สกรีนขึ้นนะให้พวกเราดูแล้วเราก็จะได้ดูเรื่องนี้กันนะครับ Well, today I uh, we will talk about at least four topics. I think you can see the screen now. ท่านเห็นเห็นหน้าจอไหมครับ Yeah. Look, if you can see the screen, could you please yep. raise your hand? All right, thank you. Well, this is the outline of the lesson for Friday, the 17th of July, 2020. And first, we're going to talk about accent and dialect. Accent and dialect. Um, when I was in Thailand, I thought all English people would speak the same accent. Um, I didn't have problem when I spoke to the native speaker, but when they came to England, I was shrugging with the local accent and even with the dialect. When I first traveled by bus, I couldn't understand what the, bu the bus driver said. I had to ask him to repeat it again and again. And this is because here in the UK, they have different accent and different dialect. So today we, we talk about this topic. And then the second topic, we're going to look at understanding major British accents. Alternatives to how are you? Of course, you are familiar with how to ask people how are you? It's a very common question that we always use. And we have been taught how to ask other people how are you? And today we're going to learn, is there any alternative way to how are you? And then the last topic will be about the questions for monks. I have sent you 10 questions, just in case if you prepare to answer those questions, right? So I will invite Claire to tell us about accent and dialect. So. <laughs> 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 okay, relax, so, relax. Don't be too serious. <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. I'm just thinking, I'm yeah. just trying to move my thing out of the way so I can see the okay. You the can PowerPoint, yeah. The, uh, so an accent is simply how one. Can pronounces you see the? Words. Can you see everything on the screen? Sorry. Yeah, I can. I can now. Thank you. So an accent is simply how one pronounces a word. So a style of pronunciation and a dialect includes not just pronunciations but one's general vocabulary and grammar. So your accent is how you sound. And this is quite embarrassing because I feel like I should be giving some examples here of like different accents, because <laughs> that's the way to understand it, isn't it? I guess so. But um, if you go onto YouTube and search for say a Yorkshire accent or a um, Welsh accent, you'll be able to hear different examples of these accents and how these people talk. And also, if you uh, listen to different, um, I don't know if you watch TV, wherever you are, and you watch um, the normal shows that are on TV, or sometimes watch the news, you'll hear different accents um, on these TV shows. And the dialect is about um, the, the types of words that you use. So you could say, for example, in... Um, the South, I was just explaining to Patsagon that in the South we call a bread roll, a roll. So you have a bread roll, it's called a roll. And in the North they call it a cob. So we have different words for different things. So for example, yeah. I'm talking about accent and dialect. Accent is the way to speak to the accent. The accent is the way to speak to the accent. Dialect is the way to เป็นคำที่พูดเนี่ยหมายถึงสิ่งเดียวกันแต่อาจจะใช้คนละคำก็ได้ก็คือภาษาถิ่นนั่นแหละครับอย่าง
ในแม้แต่ในภาคอีสานเนี่ยสุ่มขังไก่นะสุ่มขังไก่เนี่ยบางจังหวัดเรียกว่าสุ่มนะแต่บางจังหวัดเรียกว่ายางอ่าเรียกว่ายางผมเพิ่งรู้มาว่าเออเขาเรียกว่ายางก็ได้เลยก็มีลักษณะใกล้กันนะครับก็ผมผม And I tell you something yeah, else yeah, that's changed as well that um you will notice a lot more in England is that we have adopted a lot of American dialect in this country so now people say um I've gotten, I've gotten something, which is an American thing to say instead of I have. So I have, I've, um, I've gotten a cold, or something like that. I have a cold. Like you've got, you've got, uh, you're sick. Good m o r n i n Sabai. I've gotten a cold. They didn't say gotten, G-O-T-T-E-N, and that's an American thing. That's an American dialect thing. And sometimes in England, people have adopted. They use American dialect, and the reason is that because here in the UK, and we have more shows and TV program yeah. from America. Yes. So automatically, the young generation we absorb the Amer the American accent, even dialect. So I'm not surprised, but now more and more young people like to say, um, um, like to say. Something similar to what the the young people in the states say. Yes, we do. <clears throat> I've noticed that my daughter will say American words in her dialect, mm. and I say, "No, no, it's this word. <laughs> no, you should." Can you give the, can, can, can you give us the example? The example. Um. So, like I said, the gotten example. Let me think of another one. I can't think of one right now. Mm. Let let me have a think, and I'll I'll give you some more examples in a minute. All right. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go to the next slide? Yeah. So we finish with accent and dialect here, and then we we look at more details about accent. Um. <clears throat> right. So you can read this, or you can try to understand what this means. And then maybe you can give a short explanation to the monks. Okay, so when you think of the British, you may imagine poise, sophistication, and royalty. <laughs> you might also associate the English to movies that are accustomed that you're accustomed to, men who are impeccably well mannered, with Hugh Grant's posh accent. And the easily comprehensible Queen's English. In fact, you are not guilty in recalling my fair ladies, Henry Higgins, who heavily enunciates his words. So, enunciate means to say something correctly. When you enunciate, you are saying something um, in the proper way, mm -hmm. if there is a proper way. Well, I'm not sure there is these days. Tell us what. What does sophistication mean? Yeah, I know, so, but I maybe the monks don't understand this word. Okay, so sophistication means um, very refined and um, um, well well presented. So you you can have to be sophisticated. So you can have sophistication, which is the noun. To be sophisticated is an an adjective, in a way, to describe something that is um, um, something that is very correct and very proper and very. Um, so I would say a, a good example of sophistication is how the Japanese have a tea ceremony, mm. or say. Uh, have you? Is any? Is everybody familiar with a Japanese tea ceremony, like drinking tea? Yeah, I have seen it when I was in Kyoto. Yeah, so it's that's a very sophisticated. So it's a very refined, um, specific way of doing something. If you have question, you you can you may ask the question now. Me me, come to me, ครับคือมีอะไรที่ท่านไม่เข้าใจไหมเนี่ยก็คืออันนี้เพิ่งเริ่มแรกเท่านั้นเองนะอ่า
มีคำถามอะไรไหมครับถ้าจะถามก็เปิดไมค์ได้เลยครับ You can ask in English <laughs> I, Or in Thai uh, I don't understand the word the, the phrase My fair lady's professor Henry Higgins What is it? So Which there one? is there is a book there is a uh, book an English book which was written maybe um, wow 80 or 70 or 80 years ago called My Fair Lady and it's the story of a uh, a very poor lady from London who um, gets taken in or looked after by a very fine gentleman and he teaches her how to speak properly how to um how to um carry herself properly um and how to be sophisticated so what, what to wear how to um how her mannerisms because she was very poor and she did not have very good manners and so he teaches her to speak properly and then she becomes a lady uh, and this is it. this story เข้าใจนะครับโอเค we go to next one okay and you read that in fact you can move you can move I am I'm moving it I'm moving it right. <laughs> well what do you have in mind when come to a shock when you touch down on British soil I can imagine that I had the same thing when I went to Thailand I had a big shock too <laughs> You will be bombarded with accents you are unfamiliar with. Nothing close to your idea of British English. Yes, yes. And it can be um, very disorientating. Could you put your hand up if you are in England right now? Which? Okay, anyone who's in England, could you please um, put your hand up? Okay. Oh, none of them. Okay, Thandadun, Thandadun. Uh, is anybody in one. India? Okay, one, I think two in India. Two in India. Are you in India? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not quite sure, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm sure that Tanarong is in India. Ah, uh, okay. So again, the, the, the Indian speaking British uh, accent is the Indian, the, um, British speaking Indian accent is also very difficult to understand and also the mannerisms where they say yes that's fine yes that's okay okay no problem <laughs> am I yes yes or is it no <laughs> yeah it's difficult to understand okay because this is because the UK is very rich in dialects. Yes, it is. There are many, many accents because there's been many years of influences from um, different uh, moving of people. So people have come from many different countries and many parts of the countries and accents have developed in a, in, um, over a very, very long period of time and the way that our language has evolved. Right. Um, I just look at the time. Uh, seven past two already. Right. Okay. Well, let's talk about Georgie accent. I think the hardest from my experience, the hardest, the hardest accent I ever heard. <laughs> right. Do we have an example of a Georgie accent? Uh, I can't. I can't remember, <laughs> <laughs> but so I find very, English, very hard to understand them. It is, it is quite difficult. So Geordie normally refers to people in the, yeah, the dialect of Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Don't worry if you find this accent difficult to understand. Yes, it is, it is difficult. To prevent you looking completely confused, <laughs> here are a few words that you might hear. Canny, yeah. Canny means good. Canny. 
mm. and gan. We, <laughs> I'm going to read this now. We gan down the road. Dune. <laughs> yeah, dune. Mm. They do say dune. Yeah, dune for down. Mm. <laughs> we gan down the road. Yeah. Well, Is that a good example? Yeah, yeah good. <laughs> Well, I would recommend if you would like to learn more about Jody accent, you may go to live somewhere in Yorkshire for a while. Yeah. And then by times you will be able to understand the Jody accent. I have some friend and who live in Yorkshire, who live in Lincoln, and she's working as a nurse in the hospital. Although she has been living in a Lincoln for many years, but still, she finds it difficult to understand the Jody accent. So, this is normal. This is normal because, um, because the way the people that speak is a bit difficult to understand, even for the British people. I mean, British from other parts of England. Okay, we need to go quickly. And the reason why I, I talk about accent because I want you to understand how many accent or how the people here in the UK speak English. The, because not only one accent and the accent we are familiar with, like uh, from BBC radio, from BBC news or whatever. But if you come to live here in England and then you will have a chance to learn more about accent. All right, so we go to the next one. The Cockney accent. It's co in East London and refers to anyone from London. Cockney is also described as anyone with earshot of the bells of Mary Lebo in the city of London. And that's, um, yeah, the church bells. So back in, back in, the, back in the olden times before um, England was sort of pre-war really, pre-Second World War, um, there wasn't a lot of um, immigration into London and it was much more um, full of British people opposed to, now it's very, very multicultural. London is full of people from all over the world. It, uh, mm -hmm. Back in the day, long ago, it was mainly London people and they would speak with a Cockney accent. You know, I, I still remember when I got lost I was looking for the um, Lithuanian embassy. Mm -hmm. So I got lost. And then I saw one girl and who was then handing out the leaflet. And she looked, she looked Western, but she couldn't speak English. So I asked her, could you please tell me how can I um, find the Lit Lithuanian embassy? She said, no, no English, no English. So I was surprised. I was surprised. So if you come to oh, yeah. London, there's today, lots of people that don't speak English. Yeah. Lots yeah. of people. Yeah. Even in on the bus, you can hear different languages. Yeah. Not only English. So don't expect that yes. people here in the UK in London we speak only English. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. So we go to the next one. And this is kind of what we were talking about just now. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of different accents, and in East London and places like that, people talk with a very specific dialect. So if you find yourself wandering the streets of Hackney, you might come across the following terms: blood, meaning mate. Um, Ends refers to where you live, and bear is used to mean very lots, or it might be confusing. Okay, it means sparse or uncovered. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. 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 ท่านไม่ต้องแปลกใจว่าทําไมเวลาไปคุยกับฝรั่งเนี่ยบางที่ก็ไม่เข้าใจเพราะว่าเขาพูดสําเนียงแตกต่างกันทีเนี้ยเ
อย่างบางทีผมไปสกอตแลนด์นะควรจะเข้าใจคุยกันรู้เรื่องเนี่ยใช้เวลาวันสองวันเลยนะเพราะว่าเขาพูดภาษาอังกฤษแบบของเขาครับและทีเนี้ยเราก็คุ้นแต่กับแบบของเราที่เราเรียนมานะคือที่ผมเอามาให้ดูเพื่อที่ว่าจะให้ท่านเนี่ยได้ได้คุ้นเคยว่าสำเนียงของคนอังกฤษเนี่ยมันก็มีหลากหลายแตกต่างกันไปนะอย่างน้อยก็คือจะได้รู้ก่อนก่อนที่จะมาหรือว่าก็เป็นความรู้เพิ่มเติมนะครับโอเค we go to next slide the Scottish accent I really like Scottish accents I think they're very very nice to listen to um, so Scots tend to roll their R's Uh, and regularly collapse their words so they sound like they've been cut off in the middle. For example, cut instead of caught, and not with knee. Okay, so instead of saying you didn't do in Edinburgh, it sounds like you didn't. <laughs> didn't I didn't? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Yeah, anything, 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 anything. That's really common, though, to drop the last consonant of a word to go anything, and to drop last sounds and to um, that's a really common thing in the English language. It's lazy, lazy. That's what it is. <laughs> so it is the way the Scottish people yeah. speak English. <laughs> they're, they're familiar with this this style, I think. Yeah. But lots of people do it. Lots yeah. Of do it. So the West Country. So this is where I come from. I come from Cornwall, and uh, we speak very differently in Cornwall. Um, we tend to roll our R's a lot, and I'm not going to do a Cornish accent now because I'm just too embarrassed, and it would be silly for me to do. I feel like I'd be putting it on. But all of these accents, if you Google them and you listen to them. You can um, hear the difference in in accents. I I bet there's something on YouTube or on Google where you could listen to a different variety of accents to hear the difference between the two or three or four different accents that you're listening to. Yeah, for example, I think the people in the south in the west of England they pronounce often, not often. Is that correct? Often, so that yeah, often they won't do often. Often, It's often, often. So yeah, they I, again they drop the t -t -t sound. Yeah, I know one guy, and he studied meditation with me at what yeah. I've heard, and he's from Plymouth. Yeah, that's um, very close to where I live. Yeah, I remember he he spoke often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often. So it's not always the case that people in the South of England, we speak often, often, or some of them may, may say often. Again, it varies so much. It depends on what school you went to, mm. what your family. So, for example, if your family were from the north and then they moved to the south, you're more likely to have the accent of your parents. So it really does depend on your upbringing and whether you're like my my dad. Used to tell me to speak properly. He would, he would, um, he would uh, tell me off. He would tell me off if I didn't speak nicely. Yeah. He would say it's butter, not butter, because I say, well, can I have some butter? Butter. Butter. Okay. Butter. butter. No, yeah. No, can no. I have some butter? And it, or I say, can I have some butter? And he'd go, it's butter, not computer. butter. <laughs> computer. Computer. Computer, yeah. Computer. <laughs> yeah, ah. he would tell me off for speaking badly. รู้จักคำว่า tell me off ไหมครับเข้าใจคำว่า tell me off ไหม Do you understand the press tell me off? ดุนะครับดุ Is that correct? Tell me do. off, yeah. Uh, you you understand the word ดุเอ็ดภาษาไทยก็เอ็ดนะครับ tell me off. นะก็จำเอาไปใช้กันละกันเทียมีโอฟโอเค we go to next slide so Midlands English the most famous is Brummie English spoken by the in the Midlands and the city of Birmingham and Brummie is repeatedly been voted the worst accent really <laughs> is that true 
Yeah. Oh, the poor, poor the Brummies. This is sad. I think you, you. <laughs> I think the Brummies would be a bit upset if you if you said that to them. Yeah. <laughs> but this is according to the the world. Oh, I see. I see. I like I like the Brummie accent hmm. as well. I like I like it. I think it's good. Again, you can find all these um, accents online. Hmm. In fact, there is a poet called uh, Tony Walsh. Tony Walsh, and he has a very nice Brummie accent, but he's a poet as well. So he he. He recites these amazing poems, mm -hmm. and um, he's really worth listening to. If you can find him on YouTube, listen to Tony Walsh because he's a he's an excellent poet, British poet, and he talks about British culture and um, British way, the British way of life, in a really. Uh, I assume that Shakespeare might might speak a Brummie accent. Shakespeare, really? Because he wasn't, and he was from um, Avon. Warwick. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that would make sense. Mm. That would make sense. Right, we go to next slide. So the Welsh accent is heavily, so this accent is heavily English. Yes. Yeah. So in Welsh, in, in Wales, um, Welsh people have their own language, which is Welsh, which is completely different from English. So they speak their own language Welsh, but also their dialect and their accents are very different from um, it, the English accent as well. Yeah, there is one monk living in Swansea. Yeah. Yeah. Tanadun, Tanadun. You may have... Do you pick up any single word in Welsh? I know a Welsh word. It's kutch. Kutch. Kutch, kutch means to hug. Okay, kutch means to hug. Yeah, hug. To hug yeah. someone. To kutch. Mm. Give them a kutch. Mm. Hug someone. Mm. But I've been there several times, but I never hear the people speak Wales. Never. It's oh. mainly in North Wales. I know um, there is, a, children are taught Welsh in Welsh schools. They're all taught Welsh. Mm. And a lot of people are Welsh speakers. Mm. But I, I can see the sign, the sign in yes. English and Wales. Yeah, there is Welsh TV. If you go on the BBC iPlayer, you mm. can watch Welsh TV on there. But the thing is, we we are not able to understand them. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. But it's, if you want to hear it, it's that's yeah. Really okay, good. okay. Um, okay, pan by now, cap. Ah, this is job, lah, cap. Because there is a lot, cap. This is the last one about accent. So typically heard around the southeast of England, estuary English is commonly spoken by people living in the south. So typically heard around the southeast of England, estuary English is commonly spoken by people who live along the River Thames and its estuary. Um, however, it can be found stretching beyond the regions of Essex, Kent, and Estuary English is often described as a mix between Cockney and received pronunciation RP. Mm. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Yeah. There are, yeah. Um, Could you yeah. please tell us more about received pronunciation or RP accent? And what is an RP accent? I would say it was like the correct way of speaking I, I don't really know to be honest with you yeah. i don't know uh, what what rp is received pronunciation is more about the approved the approved yeah yeah the approved. or the standard accent but standard for my, english from my observation from my so um, for my research only two percent speak rp accent Absolutely, that, yeah. that would be true because we all develop our own accents mm. in, in the regions of the country and it mm. changes from county to county to county. Mm. 
changes 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 โอเคนะครับก็อันนี้เอามาให้ดูเพื่อเพื่อเป็นแนวทางจะได้เข้าใจว่าภาษาอังกฤษมีหลากหลายสำเนียงเพราะฉะนั้นท่านไม่ต้องแปลกใจว่าทําไมฟังคนอังกฤษเนี่ยไม่รู้เรื่องเพราะว่าคนอังกฤษเองเขาก็ฟังกันเองไม่ค่อยรู้เรื่องคือต้องใช้เวลาครับก็คือเหมือนเราเนี่ยแหละอยู่สุพรรณอยู่อ่างทองสำเนียงอาจจะเนิร์นะถ้าไปขึ้นไปทางเหนือเพชรบุกําแพงเพชรสุขโขทัยเนี่ยจากเหล็กเนี่ยครับเหล็กก็เป็นเล็กอย่างเงี้ยผมเคยมีเพื่อนที่เป็นสมเด็จนะก็คือเหล็กเขาก็เป็นเล็กอย่างเงี้ยคือมันก็คล้ายกับว่า small นะ iron iron and small in Thai word we have leg and leg leg means small leg means iron อย่างเงี้ยนะ yes I learned this as well about <coughs> about uh, the sound going up yeah and the sound going down And the sound being flat, and I learned about different words mm. meaning different things. Suai, suai, suai. Yeah, suai, <laughs> suai. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Most Very Western, difficult to say. Yeah, most Western people prefer to say suai rather than suai. Suai. Yeah, suai means beautiful. Suai means bad luck. Bad luck. Yeah. yeah. Luck. So you yeah. have to be very careful about how you say Thai because you could say "kun s u a and you <laughs> and you don't want to say that when you're trying to say somebody is beautiful. Mm. You're actually saying your bad luck. That's not mm. good. <laughs> right. We have about one hour left, and um, now we go to another topic. Uh, the second topic. I think we need to go quickly. This one it. So here are the alternatives to how are you. Of course, everyone know how to say how are you when you see each other. You just say how are you. But in order to upgrade your English, you can say alternatives. So today we're going to learn about these alternatives to how are you. So there are three categories: casual, formal, and fun. Yeah, I we ask Clang to say the word, and then maybe if you would like to learn, you can repeat after her. Casual. What is what does casual mean? Can you elaborate on this word? Casual means again informal. Um, I would say that um, unless you are speaking to the Queen. Or someone very very important, then you can speak to most people casually. I think most people would not be offended if you spoke to them in a casual way. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe if you were speaking to um, a government official or some or a policeman or somebody like that, it may be better to be slightly more formal. Yeah. But casual <laughs> just means relaxed. อ่า relax เข้าใจนะครับอันนี้เป็นเขาเรียกว่าแบบที่ไม่เป็นทางการนะอย่างเวลาจะถามกันเนี่ย how are you doing how are you instead of saying how are you you can say how are you how doing? doing how are you doing how are you doing นะก็อาจจะตอบว่า I'm doing well thanks นะครับ I'm doing well yeah. have you been have you been How have you been? แหละครับพูดช้าๆก็คือก็เป็นวิธีถามแบบ casual เหมือนกันนะ And then what is going on? So this sound like American. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this sound like American, but it is spoken by the English people here today, yeah, especially among young people. Yeah. And, and you can answer nothing much or nothing much at all. Yeah. What's new? Yeah, I learned how to say yeah. this when I was at the university. Yeah, I remember one one teacher and said, "Well, you can ask what's new instead yeah. of how are you." What's new with you then? Yeah, yeah. This is the what's, what's new, new with, with you? Yeah, what's new with you? Uh, Tamarai, Mark. Like Tamarai, what are you doing? Ah. Uh, uh, And then what's up? What's up? 
<laughs> what's up? This is this is very very America American. I never say what's up. Yeah, I sometimes say what's up when I wasn't. I say what are you up to if yeah. I'm on the phone and I and I cannot see someone. Mm. Um, I say what are you up to. In, in what context you 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 will say what what you're up to in what in what context? when uh, you can't see somebody. Say you are talking on the phone. Yeah. And you cannot see what they're doing. You could say, what are you up to? Mm. Or you could say, what are you up to today? So mm. what's your plan? Mm. Uh, what are you up to today? Uh, what you're up to today. ก็คือคือลองเปลี่ยนลองเปลี่ยนฐานเป็นอย่างอื่นบ้างแทนที่จะเมื่อไหร่ก็ <coughs> How are things going? Yeah, very similar. How are you doing? How are things going? Mungan, the same. Mungan, na. คือมีมีหลากหลายให้เลือกครับแล้วแต่ว่าจะเอาไปใช้แบบไหนเดี๋ยวเพื่อเพื่อให้มันมีความหลากหลายก็มีต่อยนิดนึงนะอ่าเด
Yes, I agree. Yeah. yeah. You are asking about their welfare. Hmm. เข้าใจมั้ยครับเข้าใจนะคือตัวครับไม่ใช่ว่าถามทั่วไปนะก็คือมันต้องดูสถานการณ์ว่าเออตอนนั้นเนี่ยเป็นยังไงอย่างเช
Thailand. Hmm. Jana Don. You need to unmute yourself and unmute, unmute, unmute yourself. All right. Yes, I like Thai foods and I miss Thai foods. Uh, yes, I miss Thai can foods. You, can, can you get any Thai food where you live? Is there a Thai restaurant near I, to you? Uh, no, I like Thai food, uh, Thai Eastern food, such as Song Tam. And, yes. Uh, I miss too. I miss yes. Tom Tam. Tom Tam, Para. Yes, I like Para. Oh, I like Tom like Tam, it. like Para. Yes. Uh, Nam Tok, Nam, Nam Tok. More. Nam Tok, yes. More. Nam Tok. Yes. Very delicious. Very delicious food. Yes. Yes, I miss also. I miss Tom Tam and Kong yes. Niao. Yes, I like. I miss. Uh, I miss my friend in Thailand. Yes, my temple in Thailand. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Next one, Tan Thanapon. Thanapon. This yeah, is a. Yes. This is a um, quite a difficult question. <laughs> this is a difficult question. Why do you think? Oh, sorry. What do you think is the most important lesson? to teach people about the Buddha? Um, I think the most important lesson to teach people about Buddha, that is, I would like them to believe in themselves that they have potentiality to develop themselves for freedom from suffering. The Buddha was example which developed himself until he actually go in this case. Yes, that's mm. a good answer. Yeah. Well done. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, next one. So this is for. Surachat. Su Surachat. Surachat. What yes, job yes. would you like to do if you were not a monk? Wow. I would like to. <laughs> Uh, it would be an epidemiologist hey. because I, I graduated from this area, epidemiologist. Oh, an e epidemiologist. Yes. Epidemiology. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So maybe, <sighs> oh, that's, well, then you are a very skilled monk and then if you be epidemiologist, you'd be a very skilled and understanding epidemiologist. Very good doctor. Some because I forget it all. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'd remember. I'm sure if you start when you start doing something again, you you remember. I wish. <laughs> hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Last question for. Uh, not not last question because we we have ten questions in total. Okay. Next one. Tan pra, nat pra wood. Um, so Tampra, what is your favorite thing about being a monk? Favorite thing about to be a monk? Oh, so difficult for me. Favorite thing <laughs> is calm, peaceful, is a non violent, is a form, social, anything. Because it's so chill, so have uh, many, many things for to obstacle and to influence in your mind. You take control, you so chill, cycle and cycle, you become is a good man or bad man, anything. Everything mm. is your violent. But I, I being mom, I say myself is a lowly and practice myself every time and learning about in my background everything I I did thing I did do thing everything. I missed and I mistake many things from the first uh first uh the become monk and anything because I younger right now I learn about myself a lot. Mm. 
day to day, day by day. And we think Hong is peaceful for me. But, yeah. Right. May, may I share my experience with everyone? Because this question is always asked by the school children. Um, they like to ask me, what is your favorite part of being a monk? Yeah, and my, my answer is, well, as a monk, I can help people. I love helping people. This is my, my question. As a monk, you have more time for helping other people because you don't have family to look after. You have less worry. And at the same time, I also said, I like meditation. เนี่ยถามคําถามที่ผมเนี่ยถูกถามบ่อยนะเวลาเด็กมาเยี่ยมวัดเนี่ยครับก็จะถามว่าเนี่ยถามคําถามที่ไหนอันนี้คําถามพ
when you are a monk, does everybody not celebrate their birthday anymore? Or do you a little bit celebrate? Hmm. Sorry, Claire. And could you please repeat the question? Is it is it common for every monk to not celebrate their birthday? Yes, answer in English. Answer in English. <laughs> Uh, I try to answer the question in English. Uh, yes, I, I, I think uh, the monk uh, no, no celebrate okay. in birthday. Mm. Well, traditionally, uh, some, someone. Uh, mm, yeah, um, may add, may add on something. Well, um, traditionally, only some monks may celebrate their birthday. Mm -hmm. I remember. I remember that I celebrated my birthday by um, paying uh, for the drink for my friends. Nice, that's but, lovely. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. It, it, it was simple thing. Okay, today is my birthday. I would like to do something good for you. Well, okay, let's go else. to them yeah. to the cafe, and then I will buy you some drink, like a uh, juice or whatever, whatever you like, coffee, cappuccino. <laughs> That's uh, really nice. To do yeah. something else for somebody else on your birthday is, yeah. a, is a good thing. But we really have birthday cake because traditionally, monks are not supposed to celebrate their birthday in the, yeah. in the secular way, like lay people do. Yes. Yeah. เอ่อมีคําถามอีกสองคําถามสามคําถามที่ยังไม่ได้ตอบเอาเอางี้กันละกันนะท่านนรงค์เนี่ยท่านอยู่ที่อินเดียให้ตอบคําถามข้อที่
Right. I, I just wonder who will volunteer to answer this question. What is enlightenment? Okay. If you That's want to question. answer this question, please raise your hand up. Ah, ni mon ani pen. Ah, how do I answer it? Perhaps <laughs> this is the hardest question. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> มีใครจะลองตอบคําถามไหมครับมีไหมถ้าไม่มีเดี๋ยวจะตอบให้ดูนะจะตอบให้ฟังเป็นตัวอย่างอาท่านสุรชาติลองดูลองดูครับ but try to to explain in your own language don't worry about the mistake yeah try because I remember this question was asked by the boy from Eden House the Manor yeah Eden House School the private school a very well known private school a p i s i t e a h i w a or even and um, the current UK Prime Minister went to Eden. Ah, n i m o n n i m o n Ah, long time ago. What is enlightenment? Uh, I prefer to answer this one because I think that the next one is more dangerous and harder. <laughs> 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 so, uh, the enlightenment is a state that once uh, gets a kind of wisdom. Which uh, makes them realize the reality of nature, so they are able to to live to live with uh, understanding, especially uh, the nature of their body and mind, and eventually they can treat or deal with everything uh, properly and uh, optimally. Uh, I think. Can you help with that? That's a good explanation. <laughs> That is a, Eric. Do you think you are enlightened? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. This question is on Sometimes. is also asked by the school children. Ah, this is when I ask. Ah, na, tan fang na. Okay, now, um, f o r my that experience, yeah. As I said, this question was asked by the boy from um Eden School. I try to think about the best way to answer this question. And then I said, "Well, to be enlightened, you can imagine. At night, you go into your bedroom. It's dark, and then what you need to do first? You need to turn on the light. When the light is on, you see what is what in that room. So that is the enlightenment is like." ท่านเข้าใจไหมครับเข้าใจอ่าเข้าใจนะคือถ้าตอบเด็กก็ต้องตอบลักษณะอย่างนี้แต่ถ้าตอบผู้ใหญ่นะก็บอกว่า to understand the four noble truths to understand the four noble truths to understand what suffering is what the cause of suffering is what the end of suffering is or what the part leading to the end of suffering is อันนี้คือตอบแบบทางการวิชาการนี่คือตัดสรุปอะไรคือตัดสรุปคือรู้เรื่องทุกสมุทัยนิโรธมากนั่นแหละครับแต่ว่าถ้าตอบเด็กเนี่ยไปตอบอย่างนั้นมันก็มันก็ยิ่งจะงงผมก็เลยอุปมาเมื่อกี้กลางคืนนะครับเข้าห้องเธอไปเข้าห้องนอนตัวเองนะแล้วก็มันมืดเนี่ยถ้าเธอเธอจะต้องทําอะไรก่อนต้องเปิดไฟก่อนพอเปิดไฟปุ๊บมันเห็นอะไรในห้องเนี่ยนั่นคือคือเอ็นไลท์เมนต์ข้าใจนะผมถามพี่ครูโบทีอ่าผมถามว่าเนี่ยอ่าท่านพี่ครูโพธิเนี่ยผมตอบเด็กอย่างเงี้ยแค่ได้ไหมบอกเออดีเลยท่านดีเลยพี่ครูโพธิเนี่ยเป็นเป็นพานักวิชาการคือถ้าจะตอบสั้นๆก็คือถ้าตอบเป็นวิชาการก็บอกว่าตัดสรุปอริยสัจสี่เดี๋ยวถ้าตอบเด็กก็ต้องตอบให้มีคำอุปมาประหมายเขาจะได้เข้าใจนะครับโอเค who gonna take the the last question มีใครจะตอบคำถามนี้ไหมครับไม่ต้องไม่ไม่ไม่ตอบให้อันตรายก็ได้ครับไม่เป็นไรหรอก racism <laughs> ท่านนัทวุฒิตอบไหมลองดูก็ได้ครับอาจารย์ลองดูโอเคยูแคนทรายไอ้ทิ้งเอเวอร์วันอันดับสตันว่าเรซิสซึมอีสเข้าใจใช่ไหมครับว่าเรซิสซึมคืออะไรเหยียดชาติเหยียดเชื้อชาติครับเหยียดเชื้อชาติโอเคยูแคนทรายโอ้ is racism question is so sensitive every country every corner in the world have racism because racism is is a bad culture From human being, because our blood is red, every people is blood is red. Yeah. We are same. 
why do you frame everything have black skin or white skin be different, not different mind? In my mind, because he human being, we a little part in nature. Human, yeah. human thing about God, not God. Human is a like animal. It's a little part in the world, it's just a little part in nature. It was quantum. You will see, so easy. Coronavirus, balan to balan in the nature, control in the world. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I think it lets it. The system is uh, really bad for um, some some people think maybe like that. Don't understand. I think it's uh, un unpolite and don't understand. It, that it can, don't understand it, uh, we are human. Yeah. If you understand it, uh, Buddha said, Buddha he said it really, we are no, it's a uh, peaceful. If you eat peaceful, if uh, in the attacking at the world in everywhere you with a walk in the world if you need to know sufficient and you do know it's a people really really people yes, thank you that's a great answer mm. that's a great answer well anyone it's about else tolerance to find... sorry yeah please it's about acceptance on. and tolerance of diversity we are all different Yet, uh, what Nata Wood said is we are all the same. We all breathe the same air. We all have the same blood. And yeah, we are, we look different, but we, you know, we all wake up in the morning and want to be happy. I think everybody wants to be happy at the end of the day. Mm. So why should we say that he shouldn't be happy and he should be happy? You know, why, why do we do this? But we do this. We do this in our country, in England, we do this. We say, you should not be here. Oh, you can be here, but you should not be here. And this is wrong. This is wrong. Some people are racist. Well, a lot of people are racist in our country. And it's a problem. It's a problem that we have to um, work hard to uh, stop. Right, anyone else want to try to answer this question? It's in your own style, in your own way, or if you have something to add on, if you would like to have something to say more. So the point is, when you come to work abroad as a Dhamma to the monk, you will have a chance to be asked a, a variety of questions. So racism is one of them. Enlightenment is one of them. Uh, may Tan Dai yak 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 top come to me. Pum the make up. Ah, me me. Near Brenda. Anybody. Uh, all right. Ah, uh. uh, okay. Na kap kon ni tong ni mo la chini. Te pert o kan hai tam kam tam kap. So so now I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. Now we open the floor for everyone to just discuss in general. And even if you have question, you can ask question. Okay, now we can have general conversation. If you would like to um, learn more about, for example, what, what do you want to know about Claire? Or, what, uh, or Claire, what would you like to know about the monks? You can ask them the question. Well, I've learned a lot about what you are all um, doing. Are you all studying in a in a temple currently, or are you? Um, what yeah, you can choose the monk. You can point out which monk you you um, ask the question. Okay, yeah. okay. Who do I choose? <laughs> Who do I choose? Um, Tanapol. Tanapol. Tanapon. 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 Tanapon, are you in Thailand right now? Yes. I... Yes. And are you at, are you studying at which university or which temple? Uh, now I preparing. I am preparing to study uh, master master degree. Yes. In Tulalongkorn University. In, in what's in what's in what subject? Uh, uh, 
Bali and Sanskrit. Okay. Language. Bali and yeah. Sanskrit. Yes. In yeah. Chulalongkorn, yeah. But Chulalongkorn, ah, yeah. Chulalongkorn. Yeah, not yeah. Mahajulalongkorn. Chula, Chulalongkorn. Yeah. It was founded by King Rama V. Yeah. So Chulalongkorn is for the, in, in fact, for the lay people, but now they welcome the monks as well. Yeah, because I remember, because um, it was what Mahatat. Uh, no, know, that's Mahajula. Yeah, what, so we have Chulalongkorn yeah. and Mahajulalongkorn. Ah, right, so Jalalongon is a university for the lay people, but yeah. Mahajalalongon is the university, Buddhist university for monks. Right, I am right. with you now. All right. And did you all study there or just some? No? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, did not? Most, most, most of the monks, most of, yeah, most of the Thai monks. But we have two, two Buddhist university, Mahajalalongon and then Mahamogutta. Raja Vitala University. Okay. Okay. Okay, you can choose next month, next one, next month. Um, um Adiula, I'm I'm interested in where you are in Wales. Ah, and Adun. <laughs> Adun. Adun, Adun. Adun. Yeah. Yes. I'm interested in, in, in what you are doing in, in Wales. Tell me about your job in Wales. Uh, yes, I have to, I have to, this year I have to uh, practice meditation for Thai people who come in, in this temple. Yes. Okay. Yes. And yeah, we have, we have the temple in Swansea. Yes. Um, and the temple name is Sankha Batipa. It's a branch of the Buddha Batipa. And, and we have Buddha you... Batipa in London, Dhamma Batipa in Scotland, and then Sankha Batipa in Wales. And what made you decide to go to Wales? Oh, yes. Uh, John Pasekon, he... Uh... <laughs> Said you can go to Wales. <laughs> <laughs> he invited me to come here. Yeah. Yes. He has been to the UK before and we had moved to the new place in Swansea in June last year and we were in Romney for I think for 10 years but it was quite difficult for the people to travel from that place to the temple and then we found a new place in Swansea. Um, I, th I remember that we moved in on the 1st of June, 19, 2019, and then two monks whose visa will expire in August. So we decided to invite Tan Adun because it has been here before. Okay, next one. We still have about uh, 20 minutes. Um... I am thinking, <laughs> I'm not sure what to ask. Because um, some people are in Thailand, some people are not in Thailand. So I have to keep this in my mind. Yeah. Um, do you all teach? meditation or do you do you teach people or do you just practice um going and doing your monthly duties or do you actually teach meditation so which one do you ask i don't mind who wants to you answer that question okay. yeah anyone can uh, can re can respond to the question <laughs> And no one volunteers. <laughs> yeah. Is it is it difficult to teach uh, people how to meditate? Is it difficult to teach people? So the the how question to is quite open. Uh, 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 it's easy to uh, to teach uh, meditation for people. Uh, uh, Learning the the meditation in Buddhism is a very very simple. Yes, not not very not very difficult. It's very, uh, but uh, 
yes, it's very easy for, for practic meditation. Yes, I agree with you. It's the practicing that's the hard bit. Mm. The practice is the, the difficult part. Practicing every day, practicing for one hour, practicing for one hour twice a day. I remember that that and sitting still for, um, I did two meditation retreats in Thailand and then I did uh, one in Herefordshire at a Goanka retreat. Have you heard of Goanka? Perhaps have none of you heard of Goanka? Yes. Uh, I did a meditation retreat there and for this style of meditation it's the Burmese style of meditation where you don't do the walking or the standing you just sit for one hour and you are sitting for one hour and you do not move so to reprogram your mind to not react and that was really difficult. That was really hard. But yeah, it was it was very, in the long run, very, very beneficial. Mm. Right, now I think we can do the other way around. And maybe the monks can ask Claire a question. อ่าใครใครใครจะถามก็ยกมือเอาโอเคท่านนรงนิมนต์ครับ We can't hear you. We can't hear you. I don't know what's wrong with your audio. Put your hand over the microphone. Yeah. Yeah, okay, microphone microphone problem. That's better. Uh why why you like to learn meditation in the Buddhism? I I don't know with which background you come from. Maybe you come from Christian or non-religion, I, I don't know. But why you come to learn meditation, or you want to learn the some the uh, you want to learn something in the Buddhism? I think um, because it made sense before with with Christianity, I was never taught in a way that made sense to me. I could not. Um, relate to Christianity but Buddhism when you practice meditation it becomes a way of life and you practice you know some precepts which are similar to Christianity you know do not kill uh, do not lie do not steal do not hurt others don't drink alcohol you know you practice these things and they are helpful for your life but the the meditation um and the practicing and the understanding of craving and aversions and understanding that your mind is not your ego is not real for me that was wow you know that my mind is separate to my body was uh, a great lesson that I was not I did not exist there is no I and that for me was amazing because it made me understand that the thoughts in my head are just thoughts and Christianity did not have that message Christianity did not. Uh, Christianity is a beautiful religion, and it's a be but it's it's more about worshiping God, whereas Buddhism is more about reality and about what is real. I think that was the difference for me. Right, thank you for the question and answer. Um, anyone else want to ask? Clear question. Yeah, it seems monks are a bit shy today. 
<laughs> That's okay. Be brave. Okay. Be be brave. À, kla noi, kla noi. À, thân mà hả buồn, lòng thám cầm thám noi. Kiết cầm thám kinh mà, qua chặt thám, à, ai dạng này đi. Yes. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, what uh, different between uh, Thailand and your country? And uh, what make you uh, uh, want to learn about uh, Buddhism? Yeah, two questions. So, so in Thailand, um, I loved Thailand because of the people. The people in Thailand are very, very warm and kind and two, two phalangs. They, they love, everybody was always very kind to me. Um, they would say, come and eat in my house, come and sit down, come and drink with us and talk. And I loved that. I loved the hospitality of Thai people and Thai people are very different to English people in many ways where they, they take care of each other. They take care of um, their families. They take care of their extended families. They take care of their villages. And this is because of the Buddhist culture. This is because of the way that they care for each other. And that was a really beautiful thing. To live in to live in a place where people clearly care about each other and look after each other, that was a a really lovely thing to see. And that people, even though they may have just some rice and some chicken, they would give half to you. They'd say, "Have have this." Always generous, always generous people. I remember um, you spent some time in Kaolak, didn't you? Yes, yeah. I lived after the tsunami. Mm. Um, I went to Kaolak and I spent uh, six months um, helping rebuild the 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 villages. Mm. Uh, I worked on Koko Kao, which is um, a very small island near to Kaolak. Uh, which was many people died, many people, all the houses were destroyed. And uh, I worked on a building site, um, rebuilding houses for people who had lost their homes. Mm. And that was, that was, and, and again, so much generosity from people who would um, help each other in, in really difficult times, because that was a very, very terrible time in uh, in the south of Thailand in Kaolak when the tsunami came. Yeah, many many people um, many people died, and it took a you know it will never be the same for those people again. Everybody lost a family member. Everybody lost maybe two or three family members. Everybody I spoke to had lost somebody. And it was really, really terrible. But they are strong, you know. Thai people are Keng Leng, and they just got on with it and and just focused on the future. Hmm. Really amazing. And um, what about your country? Um, can you repair about your country? The difference is. Um, I guess the climate, <laughs> it's very hot in Thailand and it's very cold. And if you come to England, Bun, you need to bring a woolly hat and some gloves uh -huh. and a jumper and some warm clothes because it's, it's very, it's very cold. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Australia, right? Because I've been there before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th I thought you, you've been to Australia, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I am. Yeah, Tanma Bun been to Australia. Okay. 
but I think he's now in Thailand. You're now in Thailand? Yeah, I, uh, now I just wait uh, for um, uh, about uh, after uh, Corona COVID. Uh, the COVID-19 to sub Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he will go wait. back to Australia. Um, and you'll go back to Australia. Which, which part yeah. of Australia? Um, Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne, no. great. Yeah. Uh, our ministry uh, out there, we have three. And do do uh, Australian people come to the temple to learn meditation? Yes, of course. Yeah. There are yeah, many uh, people come to our monastery and um, try to learn uh, about Buddhist culture and meditation and how to chanting and like that. And, but uh, they uh, come every day our temple, uh, make like a, a like a bring something like um, sorry um, bring some food, meal or chocolate like that and to make merry. Kambun. Yes. Kambun, shall I? Do you do you do people come for retreat? I don't. Do people come to do a retreat? What? Uh, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Every every um, uh, every month they come yeah. to our yes. we and have ten, a, ten uh, days. Um, not not much. Uh, maybe just three days. Three, three days. Day okay. Yeah. Do you think three days is enough? I think that not enough. Yes, because it's not enough. To... I don't think three days is not enough. Yeah, we have you to maybe. You need ten. I think ten. Yes. Uh -huh. I, ten I guess. I think ten days is a good time. Have you been there before, Australia? No. <laughs> oh yeah, I I have been to Australia. I went to Australia um, a long time ago, maybe uh, twenty years ago, but. Um, yeah, I did. I didn't go to the temple in Melbourne at that time. Okay, we still have about ten minutes. Claire, um, perhaps you can ask one of the monks here, or maybe maybe two or three. Do you miss? Do you do you do your own cooking? Yeah, which one? Which monk do you? Uh, um, uh, Tanapon, do you do your own cooking? Do you do your own? Do you cook for yourself? Yes, sometimes. Yeah. What What do you like to cook? Uh, easy. Uh. Uh. Kai Jiao, omelet. Kai Jiao, omelet. Oh, omelet, yeah. Omelet. 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 Yeah. And, and noodle. Noodle. Mama. And noodle. Noodles. Yeah. Always with noodles. S. Noodles. Noodles. Uh, Kai, could you, could you please tell us why noodles always come with S? Why noodles? Sorry? Come... Why noodles always come with S? Noodles. Noodles. Yeah. Because there is many. It is a plural. <laughs> oh, noodles. Okay. Noodles. Yeah. yeah, plural. Noodles. Yeah, um, I, I remember this when I learned English. The, the English teacher said, well, when you say when you say noodle, you can't say noodle because there are... There, one there are, noodle. <laughs> you say noodle, one noodle. So you have to yeah. say noodles. Yes, noodles. noodles. So you, so you, do, so you have a, a bowl, a bowl uh, of noodles, uh, which because you don't want one noodle because that <laughs> wouldn't, you would be still hungry. <laughs> คือเวลาพูดนูดลส์นะครับอย่าลืมนะต้องใส่เอสตลอดนะคือผมเคยพูดมาแล้วแล้วพูดผิดใช่มั้ยครับแล้วอาจารย์สอนภาษาอังก
so many people said about why Hmong is not vegetarian. This I have compared comparison is the uh, Thai Hmong with Indian Hmong also vegetarian. I talk about the uh, Indian people because Buddha he not never said it uh, separate with the uh, vegetarian or food. We call everything eat food. We eat for suffering, we eat for life, not we eat for preserve cheerful in my in my mind. Eat for life, not eat for cheerful. I explain like that. If vegetarian I thinking about is a culture, culture in Indian. And people understand Hmong is a eat is true to eat is vegetarian because you is a Hmong, not a layman. You people you is a offer your life for nature like that but because the Buddhism he never said you choose to eat vegetarian everything eat food just like that yeah which is um which is different to Hinduism because in Hinduism they do not eat meat at all do they yeah, I, I always have the question from the Western people, why monks are not vegetarian? You teach people not to kill, but you eat meat. Yeah. So it seems contradictory. So this is the, the common question you, that you may and be asked by the Western people. And my, an, my answer is that, well, as a Buddhist monk, we live a very simple life. We uh, traditionally don't cook unless we have to, because you rely on the support from the from the because you rely on the support from other people. You can't demand I want this I want that. If the donors are vegetarian, then monks will be vegetarian automatically. Monks need to live a simple life. Whatever is given. Accepted with appreciation. And it could come to the point that I could pan up. Tamai may pen may may make in monks of Iraq, Tamai may chan monks of Iraq, but what? Go chan go die, let the what you tell you what I might go monks of Iraq. Young lay India, man India. Well, I can say I've, I've been to the Sarah J. Monastic University. Yeah. And on those Tibetan monks, traditionally are not vegetarian, but because of the city, because of the city Asian, because of the environment, they have to be vegetarian. Because yeah. at the moment, I, I, I do eat fish. I eat fish, but I don't eat chicken or pork or mm. meat because it is bad for the planet. Mm. It's bad for the environment because uh, beef farming, cattle, cattle farming and um, chicken farming and pork farming this is destroying the environment so i choose not to eat meat to protect the environment because we it, are yeah. in trouble yeah i, I have experience i have experience in this case yeah uh i and my friend enter to a uh, vietnamese restaurant and then yeah. we 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 order noodle noodles with chicken, with pork, and then uh, there are Vietnamese, Vietnamese family uh, sit by uh, beside uh, our, and then they uh, look look us. Why why did you you eat uh, chicken uh, pork? So uh, in uh, in many country there are. Uh, uh, Buddhism, Theravada Buddhism, and Mahayana Buddhism. Yes. Ma Mahayana Buddhism, uh, the monk uh, are vegetarian. Yes. And Theravada, Theravada Buddhism, uh, some some monk don't eat uh, chicken, pork. Some monk uh, vegetarian. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think also for your health to eat too much meat is just not good for your we're not meant as humans we're not meant to eat meat every day um we can survive on um rice and 
pulses and vegetables and some nuts if we eat those we will we will be healthy you know i think in the western world in um england and places like that our culture is very much we are meat they many many people eat meat every day mm. and um it's it's not necessary <laughs> you don't you don't need to eat meat every day so many people have heart problems and health problems because they eat too much sugar and too much meat and uh and now we have a unhealthy culture an unhealthy food culture because um they eat too much you know but i think right now we have to conclude um, the lesson and if anyone else has question you can take a chance now we have about one minute I would like to invite one of you to say thank you to Claire and for being a very good speaker today. Um, maybe Tandai Tandai Jap Lap Asa, Hood Cop Kun Claire, Nathanati, they hang at my room, Pood Koi Sundanaka from the Mane Hub. Okay, Hub. มีอยู่เก้าท่านเนี่ยมีอยู่ทั้งหมดแปดท่านเนี่ยเจ็ดท่านเจ็ดท่านหนึ่งสองสามเพราะว่าหลายหลายท่านเนี่ยไม่สะ
Bye, and everybody. Good night. No. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Thanks, Patsagon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take thank care. You.